Hey everybody, it's Tim from Lanosa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So today we're talking about what it is that you need to successfully raise sheep and goats. And we've made a lot of videos about this in the past, but we really, really want to narrow it down. For those of you that are thinking about getting sheep or thinking about getting goats and you want to know bare bones, no kidding, what is the absolute minimum that I have to have or that I need to know in order to have sheep and goats, we've really narrowed it down to about five things. Um, so that's what we want to talk about today. I just want to take a few minutes to talk to you about the five basic things that you would need to know in order to have your very own sheep and goats. <laughs> So today I'm coming to you live from the North Pole. Uh, as you can see, well, it's not actually the North Pole, it's Indiana, but it feels like it's the North Pole today. We've got about a foot of snow over the past uh, 24 hours. The wind's blowing about 20 miles an hour and it is getting colder and colder uh, as the days go on. We've got a bunch of ewes that are getting ready to have babies. We've got a bunch of does that are getting ready to have babies too. And you know, I was sitting today and I was thinking to myself, you know, we teach all of these courses. We go over all of these subjects talking about what do you need to know, what you need to have. And the reality of it is, is you really don't need to have that much. Um, and as much as we don't like it and as frugal as a lot of us like to be, the reality is, is for some people, they're just looking to get one sheep or one goat or a couple sheep and a couple goats, um, and they're going to pay somebody to come out and do a lot of the work for them. They're going to pay somebody to come out and do the vet work. They're going to pay somebody to come out and trim the hooves, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, this video may not pertain to a lot of you that are really deep into the sheep and goat business, but it might bring up some points that you can think about, and you might be able to leave some comments below uh, for our new folks and maybe bring up some subjects that I didn't think about. So the very first thing that we absolutely have to have if we're going to raise sheep or goats, and I don't care if you're in a warm environment or a cold environment, is you need to have a structure. Now, we have multiple structures here on Lanessa Farms, but the ones that we find work the best are our simple three-sided structures. And there's a reason that these three-sided structures work really, really well. And probably the number one reason that they work so well is because they offer lots and lots of airflow. You know, intuitively, we may think that, you know, you want to put them in an area and lock them up tight uh, where they're going to stay warm or they're going to stay cool and they're not going to get any precipitation whatsoever. And the reality of it is, is they really need a lot of airflow. Sheep and goats are designed by nature to live outdoors and their lungs do not respond well to being locked up tight in a confined area. If you choose to lock up your sheep or goats in a confined area, chances are what you're actually going to find is that they have chronic lung problems. They're going to have pneumonia. They're going to have colds. They're going to have snotty noses. They're not going to be as healthy. And so the three-sided structures really work out well for us. Um, we generally want them facing in a southern direction. So we can avoid all of this extra, um, you know, wind and rain blowing in. Now we're in the Northern Hemisphere, so we like our three-sided structures facing south or facing east. Uh, most of our cold winds come in from the north or the northwest. Um, and so that's something that you'll wanna figure depending on where you live in the world. The other thing I like about these nice big three-sided structures is, is I can set them up for whatever works for me. So this year right now, this three-sided structure is set up for, uh, we have this set up for sheep. Last year, this was where our goats were, but the beauty of this is, is you can set them up however they work for you. Um, we have multiple pens that are set up that we can use and, and change as needed. Uh, this will eventually be a creep area. We've got our creep feeder set up in here. We've got some uh, areas for the babies to go and get warm. But again, basically, you know, it's it's open air in here. It's not heated, um, but it offers everything that they need to survive and thrive. So again, you know, basic uh, easy to do stuff. We like to utilize T-posts and panels because we can move them around. 
This is going to be a lambing pen uh, for one of our moms or a couple of our moms once they start having their babies. Um, but this is a must have. And I know some of you are thinking, well, I live in a warm environment, so do I really need that? Yeah, you know, they need shade. They need protection from the elements. Um, you got to have some kind of a structure. So that's number one. Number two, they always have to have free access to water. Wherever you're at, they have to have clean, fresh water. You can do many different setups for clean, fresh water. We like to utilize this here. Um, this is actually a hog water. And the beauty of a hog water, especially in cold environments, is twofold. One, the babies can drink out of the tray. The adults like to drink out of the top. And they're made out of metal. I can put a floating heater in there and it keeps them warm enough. We get down into the negative 20s here in Indiana and they do just fine. I put the floating thermostatic control heaters in there, um, keeps them warm and it keeps it warm enough that the tray does not melt either. Uh, or excuse me, stays melted, doesn't freeze over as well. So that's point number two. Always have to have uh, clean, fresh water. If you would not drink out of the water, your animals probably won't want to drink out of it either. So you have to keep that water clean. The third thing, you just got to keep them fed. It's not really that hard, um, but they got to have hay. And this is a really hard one for me because we feed a lot of grain here on our farm and I want to tell you, I want to, I want to say, well, you know, they grow better with grain, but that would go against the principle of what we're talking about today. I'm talking about just what you absolutely have to have and you absolutely have to have hay. You can't get away without this. You can't go with all pellets. You can't even go with all pelletized hay. Hay produces saliva when they chew on that hay, that stemmy um, forage. When they chew on that, they produce saliva, and that saliva helps to um, work as a buffer in their rumen. It helps to keep the pH high. It's alkalinic, and it keeps their rumen from getting too acidic. Now, I say hay, but the reality is roughage. So you can be out on pasture. They can be out in forests where they're getting, you know, leafy grasses and tree uh, leaves and things like that. But they have to have real no-kidding forage that they're going to uh, consume. Do they need to have grain? No. Do they need to have, you know, uh, all these fancy feeds and potions? No. Uh, do they need to be fed antibiotics? No. Do they need to be fed anti-coccidiosis medication? No. Um, they're going to do a lot better with a lot of those things, um, and their chances of doing better are going to... Uh, you know, increase with the extra stuff that you do. But the reality is, is no. Um, so again, the top three things that you need to have, you need to have your shelter, you need to have your water and they need to have their hay. Everything else is kind of gravy on top of that. Now, should you have a free choice, at least a free choice mineral that has the nutrition that they need, the, the um, you know, the minerals, the vitamins, things like that. Yeah, if you're not getting it in your hay, but again, um, that's about it. So, you know, it's a tough one. Um, we constantly talk about all these extra things that you need to have, but the reality is, is those three are all you really need. Now, I know a lot of you are screaming at your television or at your uh, electronic device right now saying, well, what about medicine and what about um, worming and what about hoof trimming and what about shearing and all these things? You know, you, these people don't really have to have that. Uh, there's plenty of people that are perfectly fine with paying a veterinarian to come out to the house to do health checks and worm their animals. And um, there's plenty of people that are willing to pay somebody to shear. There's plenty of people that are willing to pay somebody to do hoofs. Um, but that brings us to our last two points. See, you thought I was going to let you off easy. No, I'm not going to let you let you off that easy because these last two points are probably the most important. And this is going to make or break your farm or your operation or even your little thing that you have going on where you have pets. And the first one is this. In medicine, we say do no harm. And it's no different when you have animals. Do no harm. You have to do what is best for that animal. Um, 
if that means, you know, there's going to be a time and a place that you may have to give them medication. There's going to be a time and a place where they're going to have to have their hooves trimmed, where they're going to have to be shorn, or they're going to have to be clipped. Um, there's going to be a time and a place where they're going to have to be wormed. And it, it is your responsibility to stay up on this. If you are not willing to stay up on this, you're going to run into a whole lot of problems that are going to be bad for you and they're going to be bad for the animal. I understand that some of you want to have these animals as pets and you want to treat them like pets. You want to dress them up in sweaters and take pictures of them to share on your Instagram page and everything else and that is perfectly fine. I want you to enjoy yourself, I want you to have a good time, and I want you to have a good experience. But with that being said, you always need to keep in the back of your head, do no harm. We see people do bad, bad things in the name of cuteness and fun. They do silly things like they take little babies from their moms and they bring them in and they bottle feed them because they think bottle feeding is gonna be fun. That is not ideal for the animal. That is not what's best for the animal. That's not what's best for the baby. That's not what's best for the mom mom that's what's best for you as an individual to achieve your goal that you want to achieve and again you have to focus on i'm doing what's best for the animal there's a fine line between doing what's best for them and doing what's best for you so i hope that you can keep that in mind the last point is is you have to keep an open mind and you have to be honest okay honesty goes a long way in this business um, and i don't care if you're selling animals i don't care if you're buying animals i don't care if you're giving advice i don't care if uh, you are taking care of them as patients when something happens to them that makes them sick you have to be honest so when i talk about honesty i want to talk about honesty in dealing with other individuals that is don't tell people things that aren't true. Don't try to sell a sick animal to someone. Don't try to tell someone that an animal is going to do something that it's not going to do. Uh, we see this happen all the time. You know, treat everyone like they're your family and you will never have any problems in this business. If you treat everyone that comes on your farm like they are a member of your family, if you answer people's questions as if they're a member of your family and you tell them the truth and what you would wanna be told and what you know is right, you will never have any problems in this business. Same thing with making money off of individuals. I tell my kids, I tell my friends all the time, you can make a little bit of money off of someone for a lifetime or you can make a lot of money off of someone once. You need to choose which one you want to do. If you want to knock someone's head off or be dishonest with them, you can make probably a whole lot of money off them once and they'll never talk to you again or have anything to do with you. And they will tell everyone that will stand still long enough to listen that you ripped them off and you will lose business in the long run. Honesty goes a long way. Being honest with yourself is important too. There may be times where you have to do things that you don't necessarily like. You may run an operation and say, I will never use antibiotics. I will never use chemical warmers. I will never do this. I will never do that. Well, guess what? That's not reality when it comes to raising these animals. When it comes to raising these animals, there's a time and a place for a whole lot of things. And some of those things you're not going to like. There may be a time or a place where you have an animal dying from pneumonia. It's of no fault of your own. It's of no fault of the animal. If you want to stick to your guns and say, I'm never giving this animal a medication, they're going to probably die a slow and horrible death. And that is something that you're going to have to make a decision as to what you're going to do. That goes back to the do no harm. That goes back to being honest. You have to be honest with yourself. What is right for this animal? What am I doing? Am I doing what's right? Am I doing what's wrong? And those are questions that you'll have to ask or answer Excuse me, on your own. So we talked about five basic things that you need to have when you're going to raise sheep and goats so we need our shelter we need our water we need our hay do no harm be honest other than that the rest of it uh, you know it's up to you how much you want to learn or how much you don't want to learn the added bonus I guess I would say here for any of you that are getting ready to get involved with this is part of the fun of being involved with sheep and goats is being involved with different communities of individuals that do the same thing that you like to do I would encourage you strongly to pick one topic when it comes to the animal that you're raising and become the subject matter on that expert and share that expertise with others. I don't care if you become the su uh, subject matter expert on minerals, on worming, on antibiotics, on your breed specifically, find something that you're passionate about, learn about it and share it with others. And it will add a whole lot to you and to the experience that you're having. Um, um, and it will help people out. So with that being said, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, or if you want to share some information, there's something that you think we didn't cover, feel free to leave it below. My camera person almost just fell over on a giant pile of snow. She didn't. Good job. 
Anyways, I am Tim from Lenosa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. We really appreciate you watching our videos and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lenosa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Today we're coming to you live from Satan's Icebox. Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lenosa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Today we're coming to you live from my mother-in-law's cold, cold heart. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Tim from Lenosa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Today we are coming to you live from the shady side of an iceberg. Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lenosa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Today we're coming to you live from a penguin colony. Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lenosa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Today we're coming to you live from the South Pole.